they all suck. They're all narcissists. They're all horrible human beings. Just, just in general, you'll be a terrible person to get involved with that. All good. Baseball Dad Project, making the players of the game balls for the championship game. Dad Project, tick <laughs> MVP game balls for the game tomorrow. I texted them myself. Jesus Do I look Christ, bro. Look at that font. Honestly, look at that. You couldn't even bother to like buy like vinyl lettering. Like, I get it. Dad Project, right? Dad Project that project might should involve maybe a bit more effort maybe going and buying some gold balls maybe getting them shipped over maybe finding a place that has gold balls in stock and then go into the place and get them because i'm sure it does exist baseball being as big as it is in america i'm sure there must be a place somewhere within this region the surrounding areas of la where you can go and get like custom made stuff we have it in the uk you guys in america must have a lot of it because you guys have loads more sports than we play right that, especially kids and you have a lot of fucking events and stuff and things that people would need trophies for or special commemorative events or special cremative object, sorry. So surely there must be a place where Brendan could go to within the surrounding areas of LA where you can go and get some custom balls made. They might not be gold, but maybe you can, maybe you can get the, the lettering done on them. Maybe that's a good thing. So it's not gold, or maybe you can get a trophy, a belt, a fucking picture frame, something that looks a little bit more like done, you know? That might help. Or if you're really going to do the dad project, go all the way and actually do it properly. Maybe you sand down the balls. So the, the paint sticks on them better, right? Maybe you sand them down. Um, maybe you buy some vinyl fucking paper, some vinyl material, and you actually cut out some of the letterings that you want to use and shit. Especially if it's just like, what is it? I don't know what the score is called. I think it's like an S and a C. Those are, those are pretty too easy letters to kind of, you know, exacto knife out of some vinyl and shit and then glue them on. How, would that be too difficult? Instead of just taking a, you know, a regular fucking Sharpie you've got in your drawer in your kitchen that's probably run out of ink and then just applying it on it and kind of fucking it up like ugh, always a bare minimum and even for his kids like come on man have a little bit of extra effort spend a bit of money all that money you spend on a fucking dodge 170 lime devil you know a lamborghini truck a fucking you know g-wagon a ferrari all this money on cars and trainers but when it comes to the kids they get fucking gold they get baseball old baseball balls sprayed gold with like house spray paint and then with some uh, fucking biro on the top of it sharpie that does probably the spray paint didn't have time to dry too tough and then you just paint over it with fucking you know sharpie come on man a bit more effort brendan a bit more fucking effort bro the, the game balls for the championship game dad project tick mvp game balls for the game tomorrow I texted them myself. You are looking at spray painted baseballs oh, covered Jesus in marker Christ. because Brendan Shorb has never heard of a trophy shop. This is what it's supposed it, to look like. It, that's what I said exactly. It, that's what big up the retroactive. Surely you have trophy shops in the states where you could get stuff like this done. Even better, like this is even better than what I than what I was thinking. I was thinking go to a trophy shop, maybe buying something that has like half of the what you want. So maybe it's like a ball and it's got it's got like the you know, maybe you could get printed a certain thing on it and you add the other thing on top of it. Maybe it's a particular type of mascot, maybe it's a particular type of ribbon or whatever, colours to represent the colours of the team. Something, man, put some effort in it. Guy just literally like he's treating his kids' baseball game with those balls like they're just a regular park team. But he talks about his kids' baseball team like his kids are about to pay for the pros. If they're about to pay for the pros, get them some pro fucking trophies. Like, especially when you have the public image of an ex-UFC podcaster millionaire. But somebody tasked Brendan with his kids' baseball team awards and Jesus, it, this might be the funniest thing he has or ever will do. And, if and, and that's a ma major thing that Retroactive pointed out here. This is Brendan's task. So most likely the coach is already fed up with Brendan, I'd assume so. If he's anything like he is on pods, if he's anything like he has appeared when he does other interviews, if he's just the way that we've always kind of known Brendan to be, he probably gets on your nerves after a certain while. Maybe the enthusiasm, maybe the knowledge, maybe the, you know, the encouragement, the fucking insights, the passion that he initially brought to the team, being a former professional athlete, being a micro celebrity, all this sort of stuff is really cool. After a while, if you're the coach, it kind of gets a bit tired and you're probably trying to give this guy anything to sort of distract him and kind of get him away from you.
you give him a task you say okay cool boy you go and sort you go and look after the fucking trophies and the special things for the kids and i'll look after the coaching you're hoping he can just distract himself long enough so you can actually continue coaching the kids and doing what you actually enjoy and what your actual passion is and what you're actually good at he then goes and takes two seconds to spray paint these balls comes back he's already done it you're like fuck you know i'll give you one job to get away from me but also a chance for you to kind of you know flex your muscles and i don't know show, show off your resources your network maybe you maybe you can't get hold of these trophy boards quickly maybe the turnaround time is really long but because you're a celebrity and because you're well known maybe you walked in there and you fucking flex your joe rogan muscles and you got them to fucking turn this thing around for you quickly do something no instead he comes back with these badly gold spray painted balls that he's then drawn over or written over in fucking sharpie the letters are going this way letters are going that way some of them have been messed up and he went over them again it doesn't look like there's enough ink on the fucking sharpie it's like bruh you can't do anything right if that wasn't enough this man wrote the wrong yo big up koila wagwan koila wagwan koila in the chat wagwan wagwan jack donahue wagwan wagwan date Brendan wrote the date he did this little dad project, as he called it, <laughs> instead of the date of the baseball game before posting it on Instagram. Can you imagine Hon what the- Honestly, can you imagine how embarrassing that is? You write the date that you did the actual thing as opposed to the date the actual game is going to be on to commemorate the date of the- It's like, bro, can't you do anything right? And most likely you have to wipe that shit off with fucking whatever you're wiping it off with. A little bit of the Sharpie is going to come off. It's going to bleed into the gold. The gold will come off. You spray paint it. It'll look terrible. So you just have to throw that one away and do it again. Oh, so embarrassing, bro. You can't do anything right. Other parents will think handmade awards. The youth team will probably start using the awards as baseballs and smear marker and gold paint on everything. As the comments said, they probably have big bold spots on the bottom already, <laughs> exactly. judging by the Instagram pic. Exactly. This has the craftsmanship of a macaroni painting going on the fridge, but Brendan Shaw isn't three. He's 41. And he's going to imagine, present these imagine. and embarrass the every <laughs> <laughs> He's going to present these to people as awards. Is this man just the world's Tyler Durden? Like, he, he has to be a figment of our collective imagination at this point. It's genuinely baffling. I mean, can this man do anything right? Sure. Maturity, maturity, in my opinion, is realizing that nothing in life is fair and you get what you can get when you can get it in life that's it there's no making sense of this which is why i love to laugh at this and point and laugh i think at the beginning of my streaming journey especially when i was doing these type of shows i think i was trying way too hard to try to like understand the dumbness the redactedness of this guy and everybody else included i think the best part of the best thing to do when you're doing these type of streams is just to enjoy the fucking shit show because to me this is our version of kardashians right but with an extra bit of redactedness involved in it you don't try and you know hyper analyze or psychoanalyze the kardashians you just enjoy the show for what it is you enjoy 90 day fiance for what it is you enjoy my 500 my 500 pound life for what it is you don't try to like get some life lessons from it and pull out some deep meaning and bit, 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 and kind of cross your arms and look down on people no you just enjoy the shit show because life is a shit show and if anything this is a microcosm or a reflection of life in general and it should allow you allow you to know that in life you'll probably encounter many brendans people that don't deserve anything that they have zero just through happenstance and luck and all this luck because a lot of brendan's success is luck right if he doesn't bump into brendan so if he doesn't bump into rogan if he doesn't bump into brian callan his career isn't what it is but it did he did end up doing that and now he's a multi-millionaire and he has ability to fucking earn a living through talking even though he can barely talk and all this malarkey but you don't try and understand it you just accept it for what it is and you just point and laugh because that's all you can do because this guy quit comedy this guy quit comedy to help his kid pursue a career as a baseball player. Then you ask yourself, how old is his fucking child? His child's fucking seven slash eight years old. Then you say, okay, cool. You're taking your kid's career seriously because you think he's got something in him because you've also been a professional athlete yourself. And then you find this yourself, hold on, what, what, has, what, what, what sport did Brendan actually become a professional in? UFC. But how long was he in that for? Not that long, actually. Did he do anything else before that? Not no of course not the only thing he did to a high level really maybe lacrosse or football to a certain extent 
So you think about, okay, cool, no wonder, cool, no, wor no worries. You quit comedy to pursue your kid's fucking baseball career. At least you're hanging out with your kid. At least you're present in your kid's life. Some kids don't have that as a father figure. Great, amazing, you do it. Then you go and show off this whole thing, right? You're bragging about being the fucking baseball dad. And the one job you get to get, you get given, the one job you get given is to create these commemorative balls or commemorative fucking ornaments trophies something for the kids to commemorate this fucking historic game that they're playing the one job you get given and you still fuck it up god almighty you just have to point and laugh surely he could have just googled baseball trophies and ordered a whole bunch like how, how did this happen how did nobody <laughs> in his life go do it no 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 ticket sales, so I had to cancel the comedy tour. Live <laughs> podcasts keep getting pushed back. I mean, this week, Brian Allegation Callan and Shorb thought an AI movie Brian trailer Allegation. was real and that Conor McGregor was actually playing Popeye. I can't believe that I... What? No way. N I didn't see this. No way. No way did these motherfuckers think that Conor McGregor AI trailer that was going viral a couple of days ago or that was on the timeline if you have the same timeline as I do no way did they think that trailer was real no way did they think that video was real oh my fucking god <laughs> the conor mcgregor thing yeah it's incredible that's all right dude that's how it goes conor mcgregor is in the new popeye starring with marvel <laughs> popeye. jesus christ Massive. yeah and starring as popeye the man the ai era is really going to do a number on people like shorb and callan the fighter and the kid is that like a boomer thing, do you think? Maybe because they're boomers or they're just redacted. How do certain people get fooled by these AI things? Aren't they obviously AI? If you spend any amount of time on the internet or you just have any semblance of understanding of media, you would be easy, it would be easy to call that shit out. It's so bait when you see it. Even some articles, you read them and you're like, oh shit, somebody, somebody wrote this with ChatGPT. It's pretty obvious to kind of see that sort of shit. It doesn't require like a discerning mind or anything or any type of intellect or any whatever. It's just, if you spend enough time on the internet, it's kind of easy to kind of suss what is AI and what isn't AI. But again, maybe I'm wrong. We'll just become these two talking about things that aren't even real. At least Shorb is still doing a solid public service by mentally torturing Chris D'Elia. No, well, ah, no, it's Nick. not. No, it's because I That's wasn't. That's exactly what it's like. We're... <laughs> because At it... seven. Dude. When I don't talk, you don't talk. And then I go to talk, I go. and then you talk. I go. It's the icing. Chris is genuinely losing. <laughs> Chris does not like that man. Or does, no, sorry, I retract that. I said earlier, Chris likes Brendan, but I don't think Chris likes Chris. Chris, I don't think Chris likes the fact that he has to rely on Brendan for a salary. I think he probably, you know, it's sort of like, you know, when you lend a friend money and they say, oh, if you lend someone money, especially a friend, be ready for that to ruin your relationship because they're then going to despise the fact that they had to ask you for money in the first place. You may be OK with it. You may be OK with them not even paying you back, whatever. But they're going to not like you anymore just because you put them in the, no, just because they feel like you put them in a position to ask them for the first do you know what I mean that word power and balance so I think with Chris D'Elia he definitely feels like oh my god I can't believe I now have to rely on this man for a salary like and I actually need it I can't just not show up because let's be honest like for the whole time Golden Hour has been around how many episodes has Chris missed he hasn't missed many you know Chris hasn't missed many episodes of Golden Hour Eric has missed a few going to Austin to do comedy mothership and you know his career is blossoming and he's going doing fucking you know auditions and whatever things and bobs Brendan Schaub sometimes hasn't turned up because he's just going to do some car mods but Chris has always been there he hasn't really missed the golden now I don't think he hasn't missed many so he clearly needs the gig he needs the fucking salary from it so he has to do this job even though this guy is ridiculously redacted and there was a period in fucking Chris Leo's life where he was legitimately on his way to fucking Netflix stardom and then it all got taken away from him once everybody found out he was a diddler. And now he sits across from this dude who doesn't let him finish, not even a sentence, a fucking... Yeah, he doesn't even let him finish actual full thoughts. Not even... He doesn't even let him finish sentences. And sometimes he can't get out two words before Brendan doesn't interrupt with his redacted take. He's just sitting there thinking, I have to, I have to put up with this. I have no other choice. This man is actually my boss.
losing his mind and if his allegations are true, it's exactly the workplace he deserves and more. I, I, I'm, I wait. Oh. You know yeah, go. I wait to give you a chance to talk. I don't want to go there. Don't use it. I don't want to go there. How long this will continue is the better question as Golden <laughs> Hour is slowly losing its dependable audience. They wouldn't manage to pay these three based off the podcast's own profits of AdSense and sponsors. But considering it's a part of Podcast One, the alleged shady folk that owe many big creators millions of dollars, they're probably paid in shares that are getting lower every single day. When's that going to end, by the way? When are we going to do a recap on Podcast One when it completely goes belly up? When is that going to happen? That's going to be a funny one because they still owe a fee of Vaughn money. Brendan just like signed a new deal with Podcast One. He got his money that they took out from like a payday lender in Spain. They did. They took a loan out from a payday lender in Spain to front Brendan the money from the 1.2 that they owe. Like some nonsense thing. Theo never got his money. Then the fucking Cast Media Podcast One guy sued Theo and a few other people, including CoffeeZilla. I'm not just sure if you, that, that lawsuit is still going through if it's been thrown out of court. But I wonder when we're going to come back around and dance on the fucking carcass of Podcast One. And I wonder what Brendan will then do. Because the reason why they stayed with Podcast One, again, I, I understand why they stayed. As scummy as that was to do to Theo, because most likely the chain of events is that Brendan brought Theo in to cast media and then cast media ended up fucking over Theo which then led into cast media going get bought in into fucking podcast one but Theo has still got his money so I think that might have been one of the reasons and you guys have also said on the stream it's not just me but other people on the stream have said and people on reddit has also have said that most likely the reason why Theo left golden hour was because the business was so fucked up and he was annoyed and just pissed off and let the sour taste in the mouth and probably my uh, other theory is that Theo's agents told him hey if you want to blossom if you want to take your career to the next level you have to get away from brendan and by default get away from chris as far as po as fast as possible and so coincidence since he's left he's gone you know up out in the moon but returning to the point brendan signed on with podcast one because they owed him money but also he signed on to them because they were the only people that were giving him really really favorable splits because if you remember correctly the reason why cast media went under was because in the beginning, the founder of Cast Media, in order to get some good clients and good podcasts under his belt and on the roster, he offered them splits that didn't make sense. He'd give them cash advances. He'd give them favorable splits that they were never going to sustain long term. And then it turns into a bit of a Ponzi scheme. So, you know, he had good intentions, but it ended up fucking over down the line. Yo, big up Omar Ramos. Appreciate you, Omar Ramos. Oz dropped about half my check at the strip club. Can drop another tip at Oz to show some love to Ha Ha supporting <laughs> single mothers and YouTubers. Winking face. <laughs> it's too late. I can't laugh too much. It's too late. My neighbors are going to be angry. Oh my God, Omar Ramos. You're a fucking G. You're a fucking legend. Honestly, that is so funny. YouTubers and single mothers have a lot in common, don't we? Don't we? youtubers and single mothers we have a lot in actual common there's actually a lot there's probably a through line that connects youtubers or single mothers we are actually have way more in common than people would led to believe that's fucking amazing observation big up omar ramos that is so fucking funny <laughs> oh big up big up big up big up um what's i gonna say so anyway going back to this um thing i was saying right um i'm wondering when podcast one eventually goes under what will happen to Brendan? Because Brendan stayed with Podcast One, which is obviously Cast Media, because they owed him one point something million and because they gave him favorable splits that he wasn't able to get any roles. Because if you remember during the negotiation process, when they did that podcast where they were talking about, oh my God, how hard it is to get a deal and they were complaining and then they started talking about the, pot, the cast media fallout they went on coffeezilla they were basically talking as if like they found that like when they went out again to try and get other podcast part partnership agreement thing done after the cast media thing went under they realized that the podcast landscape had changed so when they signed their original deal the podcast landscape was one way and the numbers were one way but when they when when that deal ran out and they had to find a new partner they realized oh shit the climate out there isn't too good so i wonder how long thick boy will last if if podcast what actually the future of thick boy and the fire and the kid i think is very dependent on the success or lack thereof of podcast one if podcast one succeeds and stays around 
fighting the kid, thick boy, everything else stays around. If they go under, I think the whole I think the whole fighting the kid goes under too because they handle all their ads. And I don't think Brendan and Brian can get as good ad deals as they can get under this Fugazi company that gives them splits that don't make any sense. Because I think nowadays, because podcasts are so prevalent and the bubbles burst, as you guys keep saying, I think nowadays the advertisers are a bit more strict and probably do a bit more due diligence on the numbers. So they're going to find out that audio isn't king and that these guys are fubbing their, their, you know, their, their fudging their numbers, they're buying views and shit, and they're going to give them a deal that they probably won't make sense to them and things are going to change and suddenly they'll be out of that warehouse and they'll start downgrading the studio space i think the future of thick boy is very very dependent on success of podcast one oddly enough um big up um coil in the, in the chat wagwan and that's why delia made fun of of via with the we gotta talk about money impression oh yeah true i never thought about that. that's a good point that's a very good point, Koyla. Very good point. Yeah, I think as well, if you remember, don't you remember as well, get bear this in mind, my guy. Wasn't Theo one of the only people making jokes about Crystalia too? About the kitty diddling thing? I think maybe Theo really got spooked when Crystalia went down for that shit. I don't think he was aware of what Crystalia was getting up to. And because he's, you know, Theo likes to act a bit chill and a bit nonchalant, but I also think he's very driven. He wants to be successful. So he was, you know, he knew where he was going, where his career was going. Then he saw fucking Chris getting done for diddling. He's like, hey, 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 I don't want that shit. I like girls too. I like to fuck as well, but I don't, I don't want this shit. I'm not into fucking underage girls. Like he was really freaked out because he was really close to those dudes. He could have gone down with them, but he kind of got away quickly. And luckily for Theo too, people don't really, people don't really associate Theo with Brendan. Even though he was with him for a while, that's he's been, he's been very lucky. Maybe because he had done a lot of things outside of it, but he was with Brendan for a long time, doing fucking King of the Sting, doing guest appearances on the Fire and a Kid, doing the whole Guest of the Year thing. Like he was around them a lot, but he did very well to kind of get away quick enough. Do you know what I mean? And kind of not have that fucking smudge on his name. So when the Bobby Lee shit went down, the Crystal Lear shit went down, he was like, "Look, I don't want to be involved." So yeah, I've Coyle made a very good point. I never thought about that. Hmm. Um, it sounded like cast media um, ads were paying uh, Alex J salary, and when it got blacklogged, they looked at it. It took out. <laughs> oh, Coil is a legend. It sounded like cast media <laughs> ads were paying Alex J salary, and when it got blacklogged, they took it out of BGO share. Yeah, that's a good point. BGO ended up getting fucked over the most out of all of it. Hopefully, he gets his money, though, by the way. Hopefully, he gets his money. I think he has, though. He's gone kind of quiet. Whenever people go quiet when they're owed money, it's because they got the money. I think BGO got his money. I don't know. I've got a feeling. He hasn't been around in a while. Um, he hasn't made another account on the Reddit, um, which he could easily do if you wanted to. So, I think BGO might have got his money. I hope he has got his money. Big up, BGO. His side venture, Toontown, is at five videos in six months and soon to be forgotten about entirely. Instead, he's doubling down on the truck persona, selling more car club merchandise, and telling porky pies to real gearheads at the Oil & Whiskey podcast. I didn't get into cars because I want to make money or I need views. I do it because I would be doing it whether there's a camera or not. So anything, no, whether it's no, you, you know my merch no, you line, wouldn't. the whiskey, I do it because it, it, I have a passion for it. It's what I want to do. So for cars... Ah, oh, that'll get people to click. Sure, pretending that he's never grifted with the merch, whiskey, or trucks. He's just passionate. It's not about money. That's why... And he always says these kind of things because he's just rabbiting. And again, I'd much prefer it. I don't know what these people do this type of thing. I guess it's just like a bare minimum type of thing, right? Because he's obviously saying these things because it's what Rogan says. Rogan says don't read Rogan says don't read comments. Brenda says don't read comments. Rogan says I don't do things for money. Brenda says I don't do things for money. But I'd love it if you actually followed through and did the things that Rogan speaks about. Because like it or not, the way Rogan acts and speaks on his pod, I generally don't think Rogan reads comments that much. Or if he does, he scans them briefly. He's very much he's very he doesn't really have any awareness of how he's perceived. He repeats the same stories again and again, the same anecdotes, the same points. His opinions on things rarely change. I actually don't think he actually reads his comments, which is beneficial probably, especially considering the amount of comments he gets. Brendan could probably benefit from that. But this whole thing about not doing things for money, actually maybe try and do that. Maybe try and do stuff not for money and not for the clout, and maybe your content might improve, but you obviously do everything for that. Um, 
and obviously you know the content isn't great anyway because you just kind of do it half hearts but this whole i'm just gonna say the right things that rogan says to appear successful is his own type of grift anyway why each episode was him dropping off his truck to a mechanic because he's been passionately modding cars since he was 16. people are gonna be pretty mean to me pretty nasty because People that say these type of things as well, it's so, it's so, DSP says the same thing too. People are mean to me, pretty nasty. Don't you understand how you're perceived? I think there's a lack of, I think this is the main difference between people like a Brendan and like a Logan Paul or Jake Paul. I think the reason why those guys are so successful is that they understand why people despise and loathe them. It doesn't change what they do, but they understand why. I think Papa and DSP and these type of people genuinely don't have any idea why people don't like them. In their brains, they honestly think they're the hero in every fucking scenario. They think they're the good guy. Oh, I'm the best guy. I'm the beast of a dad, the best of a podcaster. Why could anybody hate me? It's like, bro, having an understanding why people don't like you is actually its own form of superpower. It can actually benefit you in the long run, as Jake Paul and Logan Paul have shown and other derided figures on the internet. I think they have a semblance of an understanding. Okay, this is why people don't like me. I'm going to lean into it a bit. Like, that's what you need to do. Like, you know, basically embrace whatever meme people fucking put on you. But Brendan's still in his brain thinking he's Rogan. It's like, you're not Rogan. Even Rogan, people are turning against him because of his views and opinions and the way he kind of carries himself and the things that he says and shit and his outlook on life and how, you know, um, detached from reality he may be at some point. You've never been Rogan. Like, he had a brief period in the beginning of his career people kind of were rooting for him. But as soon as he's got a semblance of success, it went to his head and he went fucking cuckoo. And now he's here saying, people are being mean to me. No, they're not being mean. They're just reacting to the crappy things that you say and do. You know, I'm, I'm not Cheryl Kel, uh, you know, uh, Carol Shelby the car thing is uh is new to you uh yeah I mean new as far as me showing it you know you honestly got offended when that guy said that part of him got offended the guy that the guy said it's new to you any other person with a semblance of humility a semblance of self-reflection a semblance of um introspection a semblance of just normality will be like yeah it actually is man like I'm really I'm really um into it I obviously love to attack new things with all my passion. You know, you know me as an athlete. I go into things balls deep. I give it my all. I'm driving to, you know, I, lo I love driving anyway. As you guys have seen in my Instagram, I'm always in and out of new cars. It's something I've always been passionate about ever since I've been, you know, on this career path that I'm on now at the moment. And since I've quit stand-up comedy, I've taken a back seat from it. I'm just kind of exploring the pickup truck world and that whole community because it's so welcoming and whatever it may be. There's so many avenues to go down and it obviously occupies my time, gets me out of the house, you know, hate the kids, ball and chain, ha ha ha. The kids, I fucking hate them. Like all that sort of shit, boom. What's wrong with saying that? Why do you need to go like, um, I've been doing it quietly behind this actually before. It's like, bro, no one believes you. You do everything on social media. If you actually did meet Aaron Rodgers for that fucking Tiger Fick whiskey deal thing that you lied about, we would have seen on social media. If you really did start modding cars when you were 16, we would have seen throwback pics of you underneath your fucking truck fixing it in your fucking dad's driveway. We haven't seen that shit, so it didn't happen, and most likely you're lying. As far as me creating content around it, but as far as cars go, I've been modding cars since I was 16. Shorb has not modded a single car on Toontown himself, but he's been modding cars since he was 16. Yeah, okay. I don't know how he keeps a straight face. It all adds up perfectly. Thank you, Brendan. At least he's still verbally torturing Brian Callan with his truck fender talk for an entire five whole minutes without Brian saying a single word. I wonder if Brian could do the same thing to Brendan. Could Brian do the same thing to Brendan and talk to him about some non-existent billionaire guy that he invented, that he spoke to, which is actually a billionaire that he heard on the podcast. I think Brian does that a lot. Oh, I spoke to this guy who's a former SEAL, this FBI guy, this restaurateur, this hotel magnate. It's like, no, you heard them speak on a fucking podcast and they're just repeating what they said. Like, but could Brian repeat one of those boring stories that he does on a pod to Brendan without interruption? Could he actually do that? I don't think he could, you know? Whereas Brendan, Brian has to sit there and listen to Brendan talk about fucking pickup trucks. Knowing that he's not into trucks and knowing that Callan knows that Shorb wasn't into trucks either until exactly. very recently, he's clearly sick of hearing about his fake hobby. There you go. Wild. Yep. Wild. All right. Nice. Well, congratulations <laughs> on that. Your fabrication. I wish you luck on your truck.
But here's the here, this should be your takeaway, stupid fuck, right? Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Insult the man listening respectfully to what your mechanic probably did anyway. Judging by the glossy and matte mix of hell he had done to this, they're making their money's worth off Brendan. He could not have picked a better next truck mission. Fabricating? The guy viral on the internet for telling alleged lies is now fabricating his truck. Ah, uh, it writes itself. The lies <laughs> haven't stopped, though. Reddit user haphazard perfect name for this post Shorb again has to boast and pretend to be the best worker ever to put callan down jim yeah I, I i you are a machine i don't think you've ever called in sick i don't think you've ever not been here never to be fair that's not actually a good thing the fact that he's never called in sick and they've never rewarded him with an all expense paid trip or just given him a solid four weeks off away from work is actually kind of a crime in itself Chin will never take the time off himself because he's a workaholic and because he has no friends and no social life outside of the pod. And he actually seems to really enjoy the company of these guys, even though they don't seem to go out of their way to hang out with him. But if you're actually a caring and attentive and supportive boss, and you actually saw that one of your employees who's been the most loyal, hardworking, committed guy in that fucking place, hasn't taken a day off, even when they got their neck cranked by a former UFC heavyweight, you would just give them the two weeks off, 14 days off, especially in America where you guys don't get paid vacation anyway, you'd give it off to him because he deserves it. If anybody deserves that level of grace, that level, that level of appreciation, that kind of, you know, um, fucking appreciation, it will be him right a reward like hey man thank you for being standing by us thank you for holding us down thank you for being a great employee thank you for being a great partner a great friend a great colleague here's 14 days off from work and just give it to him and maybe even give him his pay ahead of time or something i don't know just sort him out for a good feeling and just get someone else to cover surely someone could cover for fucking chin for two weeks just get them to cover for chin for two weeks is that really hard to do no they don't do it they don't give they don't give it to him and, get, and make make it force him to take it he doesn't ask because he's Asian and shy and he has this weird like complex about work and bosses and he kind of treats these guys like they're fucking Elon Musk or something and he bows and cowers to them even though Brendan is maybe two years his senior if that they're probably around the same age but Theo looks at Brendan like he's his big brother he looks at probably Brian kind of like he's his fucking dad so he has this really def def deferential I think the word's called um sort of vibe and cowering down bowing even though he's fucking Korean to these type of dudes but they should really be giving him time off like hey man here's a reward chin here's for holding us down here's for being loyal here's for never fucking you know going bgl on us and because if he wanted to if chin really wanted to go bgl on these guys he could fucking destroy them because he knows where the bodies are buried he's been there through all the ups and downs he's got stories to share but he's never ever been that guy always supportive always positive always backing them always on time always reliable they don't give him time off they make him work when he goes on holiday into korea he goes there for seven days he takes his fucking laptop with him shameful shameful and then they're bragging about it you don't take any time off oh. and he's sitting there too glow and like happy to receive that so like, bro no you should take some time off you should probably take some time off it'll be good for the for your creativity good for the podcast good for your fucking sanity good for your peace of mind and maybe good for them to realize how much work you do to appreciate you more but what what do i know what do i know Oh, he's unbelievable sick. never called i'm him. talking about in what 10 years eight and there's only two people in this room i've never missed isn't that crazy <laughs> hey. isn't that hey, bizarre? Hey, dude isn't that cool in reality he's and they they refuse to go to dinner with those guys how many times maybe i should do that as a compilation figure out how many times chin has offered to go out for dinner or suggested or he's been very enthusiastic when they floated the idea of oh, let's do a group dinner in the whole time the TFK has been around, I've maybe seen two or three pictures of them together as a quote unquote family, as a team, eating together, drinking together. They rarely, if ever, do it. As soon as, you know, they only see that guy in that studio <laughs> and on comedy tours or shows where he's helping them film B roll. Editor producer Chin hasn't missed a day and Brendan has missed a ton of days. Some part of him would know people can go check that quite easily, but he doesn't care and lies anyway. All right, Brendan's getting his truck uh, worked on. What's up, T Fat K Army? I'm missing today's episode. I was on the road and. This used to be a big thing. I don't understand why it was something to brag about, really. 
I never missed an episode. I don't, I don't. I never understood that was something to brag about because the whole reason behind doing the kind of stuff that they do, the kind of stuff that I do at a lower level, the whole reason about doing this sort of stuff is that you talk about things that you enjoy, so it's not work, so it's like fun, and also you get to kind of write your own schedule. And if you do have to miss a couple of days because you have to look after the kids, you have to go visit the family, you got to go on vacation, you have an operation, special event, something sad like a funeral, something nice like a wedding, then you just take it because you're your own boss and you can write your own time off. This idea of like, oh, I never miss a day on podcast. It's like, what does that even mean? Like may- maybe miss a day, maybe missing a week might help you, might, you know, breathe new life into the pod, might re-inspire you, reinvigorate you. This whole like, oh, and hustle hot. Like, how can you hustle a pod? It's either funny or it's not. And sometimes with these guys, considering how long they've been doing it, maybe taking some time off might be actually beneficial for it. So this bragging hustle bro culture around recording and then you found out that you're actually lying because you missed loads of episodes is absolutely hilarious. Shout out to Brennan who can't be here. Oh, Don't Brennan close. can't be Speed here. Cloud the show up usual. What makes it a hundred times worse is something like this. Sure, but the trained ex-UFC black belt with a weight advantage on chin, Jesus and he Christ, still yeah. just doesn't know when to stop. Harming his most loyal worker and business runner, leaving him to deal with the insurance I assume his job has provided, or the cheapest Chin could afford to try and fix his neck. Shaw instead argued with Chin about this on the podcast. I'm still waiting on this freaking My girl insurance. Did that at this is when I lost a little bit of respect for Brendan too. I, I'm not going to lie, because this was during the time where he was doing this weird fake thing where he would go out of his way to offer people money and offer to help out things. Like he'd do this like public charity declaration thing where there'd be like a story in culture on the news, especially within fight, fight in the fight world, combat world. And he'd be like, yeah, I'll pay. I'll pay for this. Like he'd make some like, you know, vague offer to pay money and to make it seem like he's a good dude. But then when he when he fucking busted Chin's neck when they were falling around in the fucking office and he obviously did it because he was too fucking, you know, bearish and clumsy and didn't have any restraint being the fucking trained fighter. He didn't do that same thing he does to everybody else and offered to pay for Chin's thing. He was almost kind of flipping about it, very dismissive, very kind of whatever. So what about the whole thing? kind of bully boy about the whole thing as well and chin of course being the submissive um you know dork cuck that he is sat there and took it and was scrambling to try and fucking save his neck and did everything possible to do so i think he did it in the end and then fast forward to nowadays when brendan flipped his truck guess whose neck brace he needed to use for the whole bit to sell the video uh, on the th- on the thumbnail of course the same chin the same fucking neck brace that chin used to basically help his neck re- heal or repair when brendan fucking popped it diabolical you're still waiting on what my, yeah, my sure. medical insurance sucks oh okay. it's it they're taking forever <laughs> <laughs> holy f- chin you don't need this dude <laughs> chin, i do need, need it need- he says he does need it i love that you're doing does that it help thing. chin yeah, I think it's actually helping a little bit, yeah. Compare that to Dylan Dennis, who safely did the same to Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh, not dragging them on the floor, and not ending up with a lawsuit. Brendan can't even keep up with Dylan's exactly. standards. Genuinely one of the worst moments he's ever had, and Chin somehow stayed loyal instead of suing and finding a better job. Still above all, imagining Brendan turn up with those baseball awards is one of the funniest yet painful <laughs> mental images. So, so embarrassing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Shaw also decided to bite the hand that gave him everything he has. He decides to show how hurt he is by saying he would destroy you. J- yeah, this is a, a big up retroactive for pointing out the same thing that I pointed out. This is definitely an illustration that Brendan and Drogue and aren't as close friends as they were. Because Brendan of like... 2019 the brendan of like 2017 when he was best buds with fucking rogan would never say this he would always defer to rogan he'd be very he this would be the one time he would be quite self-deprecating and be like nah actually have you seen rogan kick a heavy bag oh my god look how fast he is those spinning back kicks are fucking crazy like he would say all that sort of shit but now that there's a bit of distance between them both figuratively and literally Brendan was like, nah, I'm going to beat the shit out of that fucking thumb. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously he would anyway, but it's just the fact that he would say that and be very matter of fact about it without even joking, without a hint of fucking humor or irony is very, very reflective of where they are as friends. And also made it funny that the very next day when that story kind of went across the newswire and was quote unquote somewhat viral, 
Brogan is then hitting the fucking heavy bag. No coincidence there, my friend. That's my fucking narrative, and I'm sticking with it. Joe Rogan in a fight. Five foot five versus six foot four. Rogan would have to land the perfect head kick to win. Otherwise, Shorb's size and experience advantage would give him the win. But Yo, big up Wingus McDingus. Wagwan Wingus. Wagwan. Big up Joe from MIR. I see you. I see you. Wagwan Eli Winslow. Wagwan. But nobody is. King Bayo. Wagwan as well. Like the stream. Like the stream. Wagwan everyone. Join, join. Like the stream. Like the stream. Pressed by an ex top 10 UFC fighter bragging about, I can beat someone way smaller, older, and less experienced than me. Haha. Ha. It's like, yeah, that, that'll turn it around, Brendan. Brilliant marketing move. Now you're definitely going to be performing at Joe Rogan's mothership. Exactly. I'm at the step mothership Vulcan uh, Friday <laughs> Saturday. It's the way that he looks at Rogan as well when he says it. Honestly, so fucking cringe. Let's rewind that one more time. I always remember this clip. It's so embarrassing because he was saying this step mothership thing on T5K for ages before he went on Rogan. And obviously, he probably, I'm assuming, started it because he knew eventually he would get onto Rogan. But then he finally gets onto Rogan, he promotes his dates, and he says a step mothership to Rogan in front of him almost as if like to signal like hey man no hard feelings i don't mind even though we're best friends even though you literally handed me my career and gave me an opportunity to perform at the comedy store the, the that used to be the mecca that used to be the fucking the, the the hallowed ground of comedy even though you gave me gigs there when i didn't really deserve it when i was two years in you let me perform on joe rogan and friends show and now you've got your own club you want me to perform, let me perform there I don't mind. No hard feelings. Stepmothership, right? He kind of looks at him like cringe. I mean, at Joe Rogan's mothership. Then I'm at the stepmothership Vulcan uh, Friday, <laughs> Saturday. The king of digging his hole deeper. The Brendan Shorb effect. And thank you for watching. Brendan had a, uh, yeah. an emergency, but everything is okay. The emergency was that Polly Shore was on the podcast. Right? That's right. <laughs> and I can't be seen with that f guy. Honestly, man. Honestly, those balls. I swear to God, I'm glad Retroactive pointed it out, but those balls might be an exact representation of just how low effort and kind of bare minimum Brendan actually is. Like, the one thing that he does with his kids that he says is the most important thing in the world, look at how little effort he puts into it. He just spray-painted a bunch of balls, probably didn't do it right, and then drew over them in fucking Sharpie that was barely fucking, you know, barely had any ink in it messed up the date he actually wrote the date that he did it as opposed to the date of the actual event or the actual fucking game special game it was like fucking hell you couldn't spend a few more minutes buying the stuff ahead of time from etsy or from ebay or maybe going to a local sports memorabilia shop or something or trophy store and buying it maybe spending a bit of extra money and getting some custom stuff done maybe custom jerseys hey aren't you a merch guy can't you make them custom merch design things can't you get some designer on fiverr to spec up some fucking graphics or something and put them put them on the shirt maybe do a flip of a logo do you like why can't you do all those things that you do for money just for your kids that you legit let supposedly care so much about fucking hell man bare minimum brendan bare and minimum brendan big up retroactive the the episode or the video title is brendan shorb's silliest day ever bracket so far subscribe to retroactive they do absolutely great work i'm a big fan of the channel always support them big up retroactive big up blood clot retroactive